Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to AI Academy. Please remember that we have additional resources available for you. The AI and Intelligence Community Forum on the NOW community is here with a ton of content from experts on the field to answer your questions. So please remember to go there, ask your questions and find the information you need. If you're watching this AI Academy on YouTube, remember to subscribe to the ServiceNow Now community channel so you can get all the latest information and the latest Academy sessions. Just a quick statement before we get started. In those uh, academies, we tend to only cover what's existing and available in the product today. In case we do mention a feature that's coming in the future roadmap, please don't take that as a purchase decision. And today, welcome to our session on what's new in document intelligence. My name is Loic Sanchez. I'm an outbound product manager for our AI products. And with me today is Joe. Hey, how's it going? My name is Joe Wilmoth. I'm a senior principal outbound product manager with Automation Engine. So our goal for today is to give you a brief overview that's only going to take a few minutes. And then Loic's going to dive into some of the details on the new features that we have available in 2.0 and 2.1 for document intelligence. Document intelligence is a new application on the NOW platform, enabling organizations to automate and accelerate the process of extracting data from documents. Uh, these could be both structured and semi-structured documents and integrate that data into larger automation workflows. Extracting information from documents, as you all know, is typically a manual time-consuming process, and it often leads to a lot of errors and, and rework having to go in and change values or make sure that it got the correct field. So to address this business challenge, customers need a way to automate this process to drive speed and efficiency and to free up employees such as customer service agents for higher value work. They need to quickly extract data held in multiple types of documents such as PDFs, scans, paper documents, driver's license IDs, so they can act on it and use that data in their digital workflows. So with document intelligence, we have an AI first design that reduces processing time minimizes data entry, and is resilient to how that document changes over time. And through continual learning fueled by user feedback, the AI models learn in real time. And this is significantly increasing the accuracy of what is extracted from those documents. A document intelligence requires automation engine professional or enterprise and is also available in financial services operations for banking and insurance. In the latest version of document intelligence, we're now on 2.1, it's easier to get set up and get going. It enables the path to true automation with little human interaction. It offers more features, enabling different document and data types such as table extraction. And we're looking at better optical character recognition and artificial intelligence producing better results. Thanks to the new flow designer templates for document intelligence, it is now even easier to automate a process in the end when embedding document intelligence into your workflows. It reduces configuration time through a low code setup and configuration. Pre-populated flows are created from templates with the populated data that goes into them based on the task definition. This requires you to simply click and activate the flow to make use of it. Straight through processing is a new feature in document intelligence that takes document automation to the next level. Values can be extracted with less involvement from the human agents. If a certain confidence threshold is met, the values are automatically extracted without validation. This allows the business to stay in control by defining that confidence threshold. And what that is, the confidence score is calculated automatically in the background. But when the warning threshold is set manually by the admin user as seen uh, here on the screen, the warning threshold is then compared against that confidence score behind the scenes. If the admin user puts 0 0.7, that means you will see a warning every time the artificial intelligence is less than 70% confident that it got the correct answer. And now in this version, it is possible to extract tables from documents. This is a new data type in document intelligence and agents can extract items from tables even if the number of rows is not predefined. And now we have time for our first poll. We wanna get a little bit of feedback from you all on what's going on out there with document intelligence and how you are looking to use document intelligence, whether that be uh, template-based forms, contracts, other use cases, HR documents, invoices, purchase orders. A quick question for you, Joe, uh, in, specifically in the context of Automation Engine, what are the other products of Automation Engine that we can integrate Doc Intel with? Yes, so our Automation Engine is currently composed of Integration Hub, RPA Hub, and Document Intelligence. 
and Automation Center. So within those workflows that you would design with your integration hub integrations or spokes uh, within the flows that would go into how you interact with your RPA bots, you have the opportunity to utilize document intelligence um, for any document extracting that you would need to do or data extraction. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, we have a question in the Q&A. What are the use cases of document, document intelligence in the HR space? So as of today, there is no out-of-the-box true integration between our HR products and document intelligence. But as Joe just mentioned, it's possible to create your own workflows using the automation engine suite of tools. Correct. All right. I think we are ready to close the poll. We've got mainly HR documents and invoices as the main answer. Let's get moving to the next section. Cover some of the new features of version 2.1. So document intelligence version 2.0 was released last August. And actually today, as part of our Tokyo release, we're also releasing document intelligence v2.1. So what's new in v2.1? There is an enhancements around the simple tables extraction. So it is now possible to autofill table extraction under certain circumstances. So it means when we have an explicit grid and the table is on a single page and we already processed 10 documents, then table extraction is actually automated now. And that's coming with V2.1. When we do not automatically extract the tables, the data validation process is a lot easier. We have real-time recommendation after the first row, and I'll show that in the exercise later on. Also, it's possible to have a reference field between the two tables that we use to extract our documents. So we'll see that clearly in the exercise as well. Next slide, we have a question. Do we have APIs for automating the extraction? So we'll see today in the exercise how you create your document intelligence use case, how you train your model with a few documents, and then how you integrate that with Flow Designer. And that should cover your end-to-end -end workflow. And with straight-through processing, we have automation of the complete extraction process. So that and Flow Designer should cover your use cases. Going back to our announcements, so some other announcements that we have in 2.1 is uh, optical character recognition and AI improvements. So as of V2.1, we can now support document rotation by 90 degrees increments, as well as adding up to 50 attributes now per task definition, as opposed to 30 in the past. And also, it is now possible to predict whether a field is present or not. What does that mean is that, for example, when you are extracting addresses, you know that you have zip codes or states codes that are different from a country to another country. So the AI would be automatically able to pick up that uh, for a specific address type, the field is not needed. So it won't uh, block the automation there. The, the OCR engine itself is also better with some improvement extracting text from, from document as well as an improved PDF parsing engine so that the experience and the results are, are better. All right, and with that, now we can move to the exercise. All right, for our exercise today, so we're gonna be using Docintel V2.1. If you're not sure which version you're using, just go to your plugins in your instance and check what version you have installed. I see here it's 2.1.0, and that's my version 2.1. We will extract values from invoices today, and I have a few use cases. And this is the type of document I will be using. It's an invoice. Uh, I have a date and invoice number, the company that sent the invoice and to who is what it was sent, as well as a table. That's what we call a table in the context of document intelligence. Uh, it's, a, it's a list of items that clearly could have one or, or many items, and I don't necessarily know how many items are gonna be on my table. And that's where I would create a, a specific uh, configuration for my table extraction here. And then obviously my toll, the total amount of my invoice is gonna be something uh, I wanna be looking at. Uh, so before I start, I gathered a few of those invoices so I can put them in my, in my doc intel. 
All right, so let's get started with that. And I'm going to navigate to docintel task definition. And I'm going to create a task definition. If you joined our previous academy on docintel, you probably remember that. I'm going to show you some of the new features of V2 specifically. But the setup process starts the same way. I'm creating a task definition. Uh, and I'm giving it a name for today, invoice. And then I'll see my task definition. So first thing I want to set up on my task definition here is to define my target table. And that's the table in ServiceNow that I'm going to be using to both trigger document extraction tasks and extract the value and store them someone, somewhere once the extraction is done. So in my use case here, I'm actually using a table that I call invoice, invoice task. But depending on your use case, just use the table that works best for you. So here, invoice task. And then I'm going to create my keys. Keys are values from the document that are not part of the table. So you remember, if we go back to our invoice document, uh, every invoice is going to have an invoice number. Every invoice is going to have the name of the company that sent the invoice. And every invoice is going to have the total. They might be laid out differently on the page. They might be uh, yeah, located differently in a different format. But for all my documents, I know I need those values. And that's how I set up these as keys. So just save my, my task definition. And then I'm going to create one key for each of those values I need to extract. So the first key is the invoice number. And what's new here is the target field field that I can see here that relates to the target table that I just set up on my task definition. And what I'm saying here is one, once I extract the value from the document, then store it on the field of my table. And that way, the automation or the workflow works properly. So for my invoice number, I'm going to set, I'm going to target the invoice number field. I'm going to create two more keys, one for uh, the invoice, the company that sent the invoice. And I'm going to use the invoice company field. And finally, I'm going to create a, a key for the invoice total amount. And I'm going to store that in the invoice amount field. All right, I am done with my keys. Let's move to configuring extraction of the table. The table extraction is configured via the key groups related list. So I'm going to create one key group per table I need to extract. Let's go back to the document once again. In that specific use case with that document, I only have one table. So I'm going to create one key group. Uh, my key group would be my my list of item, items, basically my list of line items here. And I'm going to specify a target table. And what we see here is that that table can be different from the table that I set up in my task definition. And that's because I might want to store those values in a different table. And that's the case here. I actually have a table to store my line item. I call that table invoice line item. And I'm going to use that to store my uh, table values. I'm also going to use a parent mapping to field. So I have a reference field on my table that link back to my invoice task that, I'm, that I can use uh, so that I don't so that my records are linked to uh, the main table, the main record. So I submit that. So I create one key group, and then I need to open the key group again, and I need to create keys. And I'll create one key for each value of the elements of the table. In that case, I am going to create, so let's go back to the document again. I want to extract the, the name of the item and the line total. OK, that's what I need here. So I will create a item name field. 
I'm going to attach that to my task definition. I'm going to make sure it's uh, in the right key group. And then I can select the target field. And I see here the, the table that is targeted is the table that was linked to my key group. So I can use an item description field. So that's one key. And then I'm going to create a second key, again, attached to my key group. And that would be the line tall value. I'm going to set that up with the right key group. And I'm going to uh, link that to the line item tall field. All right, I can submit that. Once I'm done doing that, I am ready to test this out with a first task. So I will create a task, a docintel task here, so that we let give it time to process, and then we'll move on to integrating that in Flow, in Flow Designer. So I'm going to give it a name. It's task number one. I'm going to attach my invoice to it, and I'm click on process task. And we're going to give it a few minutes to process. Uh, in the meantime, let's integrate that into Flow Designer. And so the way this is done is via the integration setups related to this here. And I'm going to click on New. And I'm going to see the creation form. And I see here I have two available types. I can create a Flow integration to process my tasks as well as a flow integration to extract the values once I'm done processing my task. And we'll start with the process task. So I give it a name, process invoice, process task. And every time my task is created as active, I want a, a new docintel task to be created as well. Uh, I'll make sure the create flow checkbox is checked here, and then I can click on submit. And that will bring me back to my task definition. There we go. And I created an integration setup to process my invoice with a flow. I'm going to open that flow here because even though it was created, as we saw, I just need to activate it. Just checking that everything is created as I expected. So we basically I have a template now that created my flow based on my inputs from my task definition. So when my invoice task is created, then create a docintel task and process it. That looks good to me, so I can activate that. All right, I activated my flow designer task here. And then I'm going to create the second piece of my integration. And that's after I am done extracting the values, I want them to be stored on the record that triggered the flow. And that's going to be the extraction process. And I'm going to give it a type of extract values there. When I specify extract values, I see I don't have the condition builder because it basically triggers every time my doc intel task is processed. I make sure the create flow checkbox is enabled and then I can click on submit. Is this available in Rome? No, uh, doc intel is a product that is available starting in San Diego. All right, I will open my flow. Same thing here, I created a flow for the extraction process. Task updated where status change to done. And then, so that's my template that was pre-populated based on my docintel, again, uh, integration setup. Uh, what it does is that once I'm done pr processing my task in the, the docintel UI and extracting my values, then I retrieved, I retrieved those extracted values and then I'm gonna set them in the record and uh, the values are populated. So that's good. I can activate that. OK, that's done. All right. Let's see if the, the flow works properly. And to do that, so I will go to my invoice task table. 
and that's when I, that's where I create a new record. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm using a an invoice task as a way to trigger my doc Intel extraction, and then I created fields here on that record so that I can store the values that are extracted from the document. So it's a way for me to integrate the document intelligence extraction engine with end-to-end -end workflows on the platform. And so we, the way I do that now is that I create a invoice task, attach a, my invoice to it, and then I can submit it. And so I created a new task. Now I'm going to go back to my task definition and look at the related list of tasks and make sure that here indeed I create the, the flow that I set up in the integration setup here indeed trigger the creation of a doc Intel invoice task. So I can open it. I see I have a relationship here between the doc Intel task and the invoice task that triggered that. And I can show that in doc Intel do my extraction. So I get the invoice number there. Get the invoice amount. That's the number all the way at the bottom. And then I can extract my table values. So consumable, get 35,460. And then the second line is my hardware. And I have uh, 22,452. All right, I can submit that. It's going to save it. And then I can close that. All right. Now, if I look at the task, the invoice type that I created, I see already some values. So let's take a closer look at that. And that's what the second part of my flow designer triggered, right? After I am done extracting the values, they are extracted, retrieved, and then set on my task. So my invoice task here has the, the value of the invoice, the company, the invoice number, as well as two line items here that referred to the consumable and hardware items from the table and the invoice. All right, what we also want to show is a straight through processing. So the straight through processing setting can be accessed via the task definition here. I have a checkbox to enable, I'm going to call it STP, and then I can set a threshold here. So let me show you on a other instance on tasks that actually train on more than one or two invoices. So here I, I enable STP and I set up my threshold. My threshold is the value I decide is my uh, confidence level. So in that case, 0 0.7, that's a 70% confidence level in the values that are predicted by AI. If that confidence level is achieved, then the values on the document are extracted automatically without having to do the manual validation. So how does, do, how does that look like? If I look at all the list of document intelligence tasks that I have here, and I look at the is STP processed field here, I see that for some of those tasks, even after 21 invoices, some of those tasks actually were automatically processed. It means that I submitted my PDF as an invoice here and the confidence level was achieved 70% here. And these values, the invoice number, the invoice company, the amount and the line items were extracted automatically without having to do any manual data validation. We can end the session now. And uh, remember this is recorded. This is posted on our YouTube. So if you think that was helpful uh, and you want to look at it later, go to our AI and intelligence community forum and feel free to share that with your colleagues who are also interested. That's it for today. Thank you for joining everybody. 
and we'll see you next time for next session of AI Academy. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, so I will show you how that looks on a in, on a document that was previously already extracted, because uh, I don't think we all see any progress being done here. Uh, but just to highlight what we built today, uh, we still can extract uh, the company name and the tour that is uh, on the invoice, and now we can extract values from from the tables and the way you would see that and then on your that's being processed by UI AI is that um, uh, you will have those uh, groups ready, I'm gonna and you can add as many groups as you have uh, values on the my table. So for example, here. here, my first it's row not ready. the table is server I equipment. I get a warning message. The amount is uh, that value. And then I get a second uh, if you line remember here from the previous extract Academy as well, or if you used the uh, amount that, will be, and then you remember I would that click once and you add submit as task, many it's items uh, as I to the AI uh, based on our prediction rows engine and, and that have. usually takes a couple of and minutes there's actually a lot of enhancement coming update uh, my that came uh, in Tokyo invoice and task records and, and then create all the reduced child as of right now our demo instances line up on my table processing properly all right give it last try all right, yes, I apologize for that. I don't think we're gonna see the tasks being processed, but at least we saw how to set that up. So if you uh, install DocIntel in, on your instance today and upgrade to v 2.1, I'm sure we're gonna be able to uh, repeat those steps and make it work for your specific use cases. All right, uh, if there are any questions, please post them on the Q&A.